Well, he met the Pope, danced with Hasidic Jews, and planted prayer bombs in North Korea. His name is Jared Brock, and he's a modern-day pilgrim. My year of living prayerfully actually started in the red light district of Amsterdam. My wife and I were shooting a documentary about human trafficking, and the din was crazy. Hundreds of drunk guys chanting outside a bar, women in the windows, totally overwhelming. As I stood in the middle of this, I thought, God, you need to end this. I thought, God, I need your power in prayer. So I traveled 37,000 miles around the world to explore various prayer traditions. It was a crazy year. I documented my journey for all my friends and family who couldn't take a year to do it for themselves. Prayer can literally change the course of history. It changed me, and I know it can change you. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Jared Brock. Nice to meet you. You too, Wendy. Uh, what you got there? Well, my hiking stick from around <laughs> the world, my camera, my water bottle, my boots. And your hiking hike. boots, a man after my own heart. You know, I love to hike too. Yes. So, Well, you started out on a modern day pilgrimage a few years ago. Yeah. You and your wife, were. you said your prayers were sort of hitting the wall. Um, everyone else you knew was having babies, getting married, and you decide to take off around the world. Why did you do this? Well, um, we were on a charity to fight human trafficking, and we had made a documentary about the issue, and we were in the red light districts of Amsterdam, undercover, and there was a church, and the church bells are ringing, mm. and men were abusing women to the soundtrack of church bells. Oh my. And I just said, God, I need your power and prayer to end this, and that's where the journey started. Oh, my goodness. And you decided, uh, I'm, and your wife, Michelle, went with you. Yeah. And uh, you were telling me earlier that she is your, not your high school sweetheart, but your junior right. high yeah. sweetheart, grade right? Grade school sweetheart. Yeah, we first kissed in the summer of the seventh grade at a Newsboys concert, so you know it's true love. That is true love. Yes. I mean, hello, the Newsboys. All right, well, um, you started your prayer journey during Passover in New York City. Yes. Tell me. Yeah, so we went, I emailed 78 Hasidic rabbis, and one said yes. So <laughs> we ended up having... Um, Passover Seder with him and his disciples. Are you we a didn't... Messianic Jew? No, no, I look you like look one. You look like you are, <laughs> yeah. okay. But um, yeah, so we were there till almost midnight and learned all sorts of Jewish prayer traditions. Jesus was a Jewish rabbi, so it was really cool to kind of yeah. see like, wow, he would have done something similar to this. He took the cups of Passover. Yeah, that Passover is such yeah, a great uh, holiday. Well, what did you learn? Uh, you ended up visiting 12 countries. Mm -hmm. You ended up going to Italy where you met with the Pope. Listen, the Pope's in the Vatican, he's in a fortress. Nobody gets to meet with the Pope. How did you meet the Pope? Honestly, like, <laughs> hard work and prayer. We had tried everything. Phone calls, emails, letters. I even got a fax number, like, welcome to the 21st century. So you hounded the Pope. Um, and he never got back to me. <laughs> and uh, it was our last night in Monte Cassino, where Benedict was from, and we got a Skype voicemail that said, come to the Domo Santo Marta at noon tomorrow. So we rushed back to Rome, and there's nothing open on Sunday, and we've been traveling for months. So my wife and I actually met the Pope in jeans and yoga pants. Oh, my gosh. You know what? Your movie just flashed in front of me. <laughs> I see this going to the big screen. <laughs> that is incredible. What was he like? Uh, super humble. You know, twice during our conversation, he asked me to pray for him. And I thought <gasps> that was so cool. You know, here's the spiritual leader for a billion people, and he understands his great need for a power higher than himself. He asked you that to pray me. for him. Yeah. What did you pray for the Pope? How did you pray for the Pope? <laughs> like, I mean, his, he gave us rosaries as gifts, and they were stamped with his papal insignia, and it said, lowly but chosen. Wow. He's entitled to this huge papal mansion, but he lives in a spare room of the guest house and eats his meals in the cafeteria. So I just prayed that he would continue to look more and, like Jesus. And this is the the new Pope. He's only Pope been Francis, in... Pope yeah. Francis, yeah. Pope Francis. Okay, well, interesting. Well, you ended up... In North Korea, Jared. Yes. That's kind of dangerous. Yeah, most dangerous place on earth for Christians 12 years in a row. So you decided to go there? Yeah. Did God tell you to go there? Um, you know, there's over 50,000 Christians in North Korean concentration camps, and I just wanted to go and pray and bear witness. I wasn't there to smuggle Bibles or anything, and I just wanted well, to... What do you mean you planted prayer bombs? That sounds yeah. very illegal. <laughs> well, on New Year's Day, there's a tradition where you have to go and bow before the dead emperor's bodies, which are stuffed in glass coffins. And I refused to bow, and I just prayed the Lord's Prayer seven times. How do you get? How do you even get your foot, your hiking boot, into North Korea? Yeah, um, I'm Canadian, so it's a little bit easier for us to go anywhere in the world. And um, we actually uh, applied a couple different ways. Um, we got rejected the first time and accepted the second time. So. They didn't know you were going in to plant prayer bombs. No, yeah, let's, right. <laughs> let's define prayer bombs. I just wanted to plant seeds because we're not fighting flesh and blood, right? North mm -hmm. Korea. This is about 
ideas and spiritual powers in the heavenly realms. And so I just wanted to plant spiritual bombs. You just that, wanted to stand yeah. your hiking boots on the ground totally. and pray for North Korea yes. and the Christians there. And you did it. Absolutely. And fascinating. D did anything crazy happen while you were there? Um, like, I mean, you're on the propaganda tour, right, Wendy? Like, as soon as our <laughs> plane landed, they took away my passport. They assigned me a guard. My hotel's on an island, so I can't escape. Like, it's so just controlled. Well, we can't tell the story of your prayer journey without talking about Jerusalem. You mm. ended up in the Holy City, mm. and this was your first time there. Yeah. And what happened in Jerusalem? Like, so much, obviously. Walking in the footsteps of Jesus is amazing. Um, but the city of God, there's so little love in it. There's so much war and anger. And one thing that I really realized was that until there's peace within our hearts, we're never going to have peace in the world. Well, how did this year-long journey change you and your wife's prayer life? Because you said before yeah. it was kind of stale. It felt like your prayers were hitting the wall. Mm -hmm. It's so many things. But we simply don't have time. But one of the big ones is I pray a lot more now, but it's a lot more quiet because mm. prayer is a conversation. If I did all the talking in my marriage, terrible idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, what do you want readers to take away from your experience? You've written a fascinating book, very fun book called A Year of Living Prayerfully. Um, prayer is about relationship. Um, if you spend time every day with Bill Gates, you're gonna get better at managing your money. Mm. If you spend time with Jesus in prayer, it's gonna change you, and then God's gonna change the world. Can I see your stick? You know, I climbed Kilimanjaro in oh, September, wow. and uh, I had trekking poles, but this is a nice. Where did you get this? Um, somewhere on our travels. We've been to yeah. 40 countries in the last six years. I'm really coveting this. <laughs> this is <laughs> awesome. I need this for my next trek. Well, you can read more about Jared's prayer journey in this book. It's called A Year of Living Prayerfully, and it's available wherever books are sold. Jared, what a pleasure. Thanks so much, Wendy. God bless you.